You pray five times a day, right? Yes. In your five daily, daily prayers, you say tashahud, right? Yeah. Now, in your tashahud, five times a day, don't you say assalamu alayka? Finish it for me. What do you say? Assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, translate for everyone what is assalamu alayka. It means uh, it's, it's a greeting, it's like peace. Peace no. be upon somebody. No, no, it doesn't mean peace be upon somebody. You're speaking to someone directly. And what are you saying? The translation is that uh, peace and blessings, uh, may, may God bless and, and give his shower his blessings to the Prophet. No, that's Muhammad. not what you said. See, you're, in it's front of me, you're twisting it. Assalamu alayka, you're speaking to him. You're saying peace be upon you. You're not saying Allah shower peace and blessing on the Prophet. Are you not speaking to your Prophet by saying Assalamu alayka, peace be upon you, right? Yeah. Okay, so in your prayer, you say to Muhammad, Assalamu alayka, ahi wa nabihu, right? Yeah. Okay, translate now, literally. I can, of course, give the word by word translation because I, I'm not, I, I actually am okay. not Arab. I, All right, I, okay, I, then let me help you. I'm not an Arab too, I'm a Syrian, praise Jesus. Assalamu alayka means, in your prayer, you're saying, peace be upon you, O Prophet, right? Yeah. So can I ask you a question? Why are you talking to Muhammad, who's dead and he's buried in Medina? You're in UK, right? Yes. And your prophet's grave is in Medina, right? Yeah. So in UK, when you pray five times a day, you speak to your prophet whose body is in the grave, Medina, from the UK, and you say, peace be upon you, O prophet, and the mercy of God and his blessing. Why are you talking to him in your prayer? Because this is the prayer is actually praying to God. It's not to the prophet. No, Muhammad. that's not. You're not and praying to God. You're talking to Muhammad. Yeah, that prayer that, that for you to pray Salah uh, correctly, you have to say this. You have to say Tasha. Why do I have even to though, talk to Muhammad when I'm praying to Allah? Because that means now I'm talking to Allah and Muhammad in the prayer. I'm talking to two Allah and Muhammad. Why? That's that's what we, we do as a Muslim tradition. It's, it's not it's, uh, right? because uh, the Prophet Muhammad is one of the is, is the is the highest prophet for us. Ashiko, Ashiko, listen to that's me. Ashiko, Ashiko, I don't care what your tradition says. You need to use your brain and be smart and see your tradition is making you a pagan because you're talking to a dead man in your prayer as you're talking to your God. You're talking to your God and a dead prophet. Why? Prayer is supposed to be talking to Allah and it's ibadah, it's worship. Why in that prayer you talk to Allah and Muhammad? Because it's part of the prayer to talk to the prophet. So your prophet it's made it your prophet made it part of your prayer to talk to a dead man and commit idolatry, and you still respect your prophet for doing that to you? No, idolatry is forbidden in Islam. It's totally forbidden. No, it's not. Okay, you just no admit problem. you're talking to a dead man in the prayer that you offer to God. That is idolatry if you don't know what idolatry is. Idolatry is worshiping idols. So is prayer worship? Is the is this uh, salah that you do worship? Isn't that ibadah? Yes, it is war. It is, okay. it is the prayer is not exactly what it's like a remembrance of God. No, 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 like I didn't ask you that. Answer the question slowly. Isn't prayer your ibadah, your worship? Prayer is ibadah, yeah. Okay, if prayer ibadah is, is not worship. Not only prayer, but other things. For example, fasting and other things. Are I don't care ibadah. about other things. We're talking about prayer now. Don't change the subject. So I want everyone to hear what you said. Prayer is ibadah. Prayer is worship. So you said idolatry is to worship what? What is idolatry? To worship what? Uh, yeah, idols of God. Okay. So now I want everyone to hear what you said. The, the salah, the prayer, is worship, ibadah. In your prayer, you talk to Allah, that's your worship, but then you talk to Muhammad in your prayer, which is supposed to be worship. So you don't realize it, you're actually worshiping your prophet when you speak to him in your prayer because prayer is worship. So why are you worshiping your prophet in prayer? I mean, that's fine. Now, in your five daily prayers, if I'm praying and I say to someone who's not there physically, let's say I mention Huya, yeah. he's in another state, and I say my prayers, in my five daily prayers when I'm praying to Allah, and I say, oh, peace be upon you, William, and the mercy of Allah be upon you. Am I violating the prayer by mentioning William and speaking to him directly, even though he's not there? Um, you see, if I say yes, you better bring up the uh, Tashahud. You got it. To the Prophet. Ah, you got it. See, people don't know that you know you're sharp. I just want people to know that when the Muslims pray five times a day in their five daily prayers, they say Tashahud, where they speak to Muhammad. They say, Assalamu alayka, ahiyu Nabi. Peace be upon you, O Messenger, uh, Prophet. I'm sorry, it's Nabi. Not they speak to Muhammad five times a day in their prayer. They speak to him directly, saying, Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercies of Allah and blessings. So notice he laughed because if I were to say that to anyone else, if I was praying to God and I say to Rob Christian, who is not there physically, who is in another continent, and in my prayer I say, peace be upon you, Rob Christian, and the mercy of God and his blessing, the Muslims will say, hey, you committed shirk. But they do that five times a day when they speak to Muhammad directly in their prayer, which is supposed to be directed to Allah. Why do you do that? Uh, it's, uh, prophet asks us to do that. So, but I thought prophets would not ask you to commit shirk. This is shirk because you're talking to a person who's dead, who's no. not there in the prayers of the, to Allah. So we, this, um, uh, we, we send uh, pray, uh, uh, prayers to uh, the prophet. Yeah, but not to cut you off, by the way. Stop. Real quickly. Uh, William, you got a troll here who's 
equating, equivocating on Islam, how it defines prayer with Christians. He says, or praying the rosary. So this guy's got to go because I'm, I'm arguing on Islamic terms. Nowhere in Christianity is invoking the Blessed Mother of the Saints considered worship. Yeah, so when we send the prayer to the Prophet, the angels take that prayer and give it to the Prophet. It's not, we're sending it directly to him. No, you're talking it's to him directly, though. Theory. No, that wasn't my point. You're talking to him directly. You're speaking to him. Why are you speaking to him when you're supposed to be speaking to Allah? It, that, that's just the only part of that we, we send blessings to the Prophet. So yeah, but you can say blessings without speaking to him. You can say, oh, Allah, send blessings on Muhammad. But you're not, you're speaking to him. You're saying, peace be upon you, O Prophet. Why are you speaking to him? Uh, no, I don't, I don't fully understand him. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I won't press that's you on it. Okay, I won't, I won't press you on because we're talking about monotheism. My problems with Islamic monotheism. Okay, when you pray five times a day, do you say, As-salamu alayka, ahi wa nabi? When we are in our prayer? The yes, 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 yes. Translate what I said. When you are praying your five daily prayers in your tashahud, you yes. say, As-salamu alayka, ahi wa nabi. Translate, please. Uh, peace be upon you, O messenger. O prophet, nabi's prophet. Oh, prophet, yes. And so you're in America, let's say, and your prophet is in the grave in Medina. And in your prayer, you're mentioning him and speaking to him directly. Okay, so you, you kind of try to interpolate that to meaning to mean that we worship Muhammad. Is that what you're trying to Well, do? what is prayer if not worship? But we don't acknowledge that we worship Muhammad. Is it, but are correct? you praying when you say to Muhammad, peace be upon you, O prophet? It's exactly what it says. Peace be upon you, O prophet. And that that's in your prayer, happen. right? That's part of your prayer? That's the words of your prayer? Yes, yes. And your prayer is ibadah worship? Yes. So you just admit that part of your prayer you directed to Muhammad, so part of your worship is directed to Muhammad. Um, but just because someone sends a blessing to the Prophet doesn't mean he's worshiping. You're not it's sending blessing. You're not listening. You're talking to him. Which part of English isn't clear? You're talking to him in your prayer. You're saying, peace be on you. Is he in front of you when you say that? No, but God is. God understands. So then why don't God you talk to God? So yes, Shukhil, you're not listening. Then why don't you talk to God and say, Oh Allah, send him peace. Why are you talking to Muhammad? Peace be upon you. Because it's it's just a part of the prayer that we have been doing since the Prophet Abraham. No, Prophet Abraham did not teach you to pray that way. Show me where he taught you to pray that way. So the Quran says, that's why I believe. Uh, Show me in the Abraham Quran where Abraham told you to pray that way. No, Allah said in the Quran that uh, the, the way we do pray now, it came from the Prophet Abraham. Where does the Quran tell you what that prayer is like? The prayer, it must, it must have been a little bit different, but it's very similar to what we must have been a little different, but very similar. Okay, so you don't know. And it's not okay. very similar. Like, uh, like the, the, he also worshipped one God and uh, he worshipped and he prayed. Uh, he also fasted. Who? Ibrahim? We'll get to Abraham in a minute, but so far you didn't help me understand how you are not a Mohammedan by praying to Muhammad, speaking to him. But now you said, okay, worshiping statues. Now, can you explain to me where in the Millat Ibrahim, the religion of Abraham, Abraham said you can smooch a black stone, kiss a black stone and rub the black stone, which is, it's fought actually, because you have to do it because it's part of your, when you do a Hajj, you have to run around the Kaaba seven times between Safan uh, Marwa seven times. And then you have to, if you can, if it's the crowd is too large, but if not, you must kiss the black stone and touch the black stone, which your prophet did, which even Omar Ibn al-Khattab said, I know that you're a stone that neither benefits nor harms. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So now can you show me where Ibrahim in the Bible or even the Quran kissed the black stone and said Allah wants you to kiss the black stone. So the only proof for that is, is the Quran itself. But I don't where? have any sort of books written by Abraham that, say, that said that he prayed. Where in, in the prayed. Quran does it say Allah gave Abraham and Ismail a black stone to kiss and touch and to smooch? Well, it, it, it should be there somewhere in the it's Quran. It's not in the Quran. I'm telling you it's not. It's nowhere in the Quran. So why did your prophet kiss the black stone, smooch it, cry on it, and rub it. He was told to do that by God. So the That's God of Abraham would not tell him to do that. The true God would not tell him to do that because in the Leviticus 26 verse 1, the true God of Musa said, do not take sacred stones and venerate them. Your prophet said, his God is the God of Musa, but then your prophet's God said, smooch that black stone, kiss it, smother it, and that that will be part of your ibadah. It's yeah, yeah. He was told to do that by God, and and uh, the prophet Abraham also did similar things. Not Where exactly did Abraham the kiss a stone? Did. You keep telling me similar. Please quote the ayah, quote the Bible. Show me where Abraham kissed the stone and touched the stone and said, "This is part of ibadah." It's not part of ibadah. It's part of Hajj actually, the pilgrimage. The and Hajj is part of worship because if Hajj is an act of worship, right? You're doing it 
because it's ibadah, right? You're going to run around the Kaaba because you're doing this in worship of Allah, or are you just playing games? No, but it's not exactly ibadah. Hajj is actually pilgrimage, and only those who have got the money. You still don't understand what ibadah is. Ibadah is that you give your entire life to worship Allah, and part of that worship is to do whatever Allah tells you to do, right? Because ibadah means service. You're an abd because you do ibadah. You are a slave of Allah. A slave does anything and everything his master wants him to do. That's part of ibadah, service. So my service to Allah, because I am the slave of Allah, is I will perform hajj. So it's part of ibadah. But it's not like prayer. It's, it's, it's different. And and just like fasting is not like prayer, but it's still ibadah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't see anything wrong with kissing with kissing the, the, the Kaaba. It's, it's something wait, wait, you don't understand. see anything wrong, but your prophet condemned the pagans for kissing stones. So it was okay for your prophet to do it, but when the pagans did it, he goes, no, that's 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 shirk, that's haram. What are you talking about, dude? And that's because they worshiped gods, many gods. They worshiped that. They did the same thing your prophet did. You know what they said? This is in your Quran. It said, we only give them ibadah because they are our intercessors with Allah. Okay, now, you know the hadith that says, your prophet said the black stone will be given a mouth and eyes because the black stone will be your intercessor with Allah if you've touched it and kissed it. So what's the difference between what Muhammad said about the black stone and what they said about their stones? Yeah, the difference is that they said that they are, they are stone are gods. They, 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 they and what is a god? A god is something you worship, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you smooch the black stone and you touch the black stone and you say it will be your intercession to save you before Allah, then that's your ilah, you made it a god. No, the Kaaba is, is not, we don't worship it as God. It's just, it's just You're still not getting it, man. Oh, people my goodness. Have to pray. You're not getting it. Let me try it again, Ashapul. Maybe it's the language barrier. You don't have to call it God for it to be your God because what did the pagans say? We kiss these stones because these stones, right, are the symbols of our gods and we're hoping they will intercede for us and save us with Allah. Okay, so they acknowledge the stones were symbols of their gods. You on the other hand are saying, the stone is not God, which is worse. Because your prophet saying, this stone, this stone that's not God, kiss it, rub it, smooch it, and then on the day of resurrection, it will come to life, it will be given eyes and a tongue, so it'll become living, and it will speak, and it will intercede and save you. That's exactly what a God does. It will intercede, no, not that Kaaba itself will not save you. You it keep will, confusing like, Kaaba with the black stone. Uh, Shikul, I'm not talking about Kaaba. I'm talking about the black stone attached to the Kaaba. That black stone that your prophet touched and kissed and he smooched, he says on the day of resurrection, Allah will give it eyes and a tongue to speak, to intercede. That's what gods do. Gods intercede and they save those that worship them. So yes, you say it's not a God, but on the day of resurrection, it's going to come to life and it's going to do what a God does, save those that worshiped it. Oh, intercede is actually speaking in your favor to God. It's not that you okay. say that the left stone itself will save you. It, it, it didn't say no, that. No, the stone is going to tell Allah to pardon those who's kissed it because according to your hadith, the stone was white, but it came became black from the sins of the people kissing it. So the black stone is saving you because it's absorbing, taking your sin. That's why it became black. Okay, so but it doesn't mean it's, it's God. It's, oh, so you're okay with that? Well, I just want everyone to hear, Ashikul. You're okay with the fact that your prophet said the stone was white, but it turned black from the sins of those kissing it because it absorbed their sin. You're okay with that? If the hadith that you're taking from is authentic, it's, yes, sahih, it's authentic. Mutawatir, mutawatir, then it's Can like, you show yeah. me where your prophet or the Sahaba said a hadith has to be mutawatir for you to accept it? No, this is actually said by Al Nawawi because he said that uh, uh, Mutawatir hadith cannot be false. Okay, no, who they're, said that? They are nice. Who said that? Al Nawawi. Nawawi, right? But Nawawi yeah. is not your prophet, he's not the Sahaba, he's not the Tabi'in, right? No. Okay, so can you show me where your prophet, his companions, and their companions say a uh, hadith has to be Mutawatir, multiply attested for it to be considered <clears throat> on the level of Quran, beyond dispute? The prophet is is the uh, is the prophet is the one who conveys message. So he's not gonna uh, like say so, how to find how, how to find out how whether a ha hadith is authentic. So what about the Sahaba? Can you say show me where the Sahaba said or the, their followers said once a hadith is mutawatir, multiply attested, then it is beyond dispute. It's a level of the Quran. Did any of them say that? No, no. 
Okay. So don't okay. give me what Nawawi says and others say that are coming hundreds of years after Muhammad and his companions and making up new rules as you go along. Stick with the Quran and your Hadith. Yes, the Hadith says it was white, it turned black because the people, when it kissed it, from their sins, the stone became black, which means that the stone was taking their sins, absorbing their sins. Meaning by kissing the stone, Allah was using the stone to forgive you of your sins by taking your sins and absorbing it. So you're okay with a stone absorbing your sin, taking your sin, huh? Yeah, that's fine. The, the that's fine? Away your sins is actually God. No, God no, but wait, it's the stone that turned black, not Allah. So are you okay with the stone taking your sins? Yeah. Yeah? Say it again. I want everyone to hear it. Yes, the stone is taking away my sins. Okay, so now guys, did you hear what he just said? He's okay with a black stone taking his sins, but he's not okay with Jesus taking your sins. So stone can save you by taking your sins, but Jesus, the word of God, that's haram if he takes your sins. Yeah, you make sense, man. Beautiful. But Jesus in Islam was a prophet. A prophet okay, we'll of get God, to that. God himself. Let's get to Jesus. We'll get to Jesus. Now you ready? You said to you, to you Muhammad is what? The you, last and final messenger. And of you God. said the greatest, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you from your Quran, Jesus is better than Muhammad. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. Go to chapter 9. Do you have your Quran with you? Uh, you have to open up the no, Quran. No, no. Get your Quran. All right. Okay. Get it, get ready. Even your Quran says your Isa is better than Muhammad. I don't believe in your Quran, but you believe in the Quran. That's okay. Okay, when you open up, you know. Yes, I got it. Okay. Go to Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4. When you open up, chapter 4, verses 106 to 107. And seek the forgiveness of Allah. Certainly Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. Not Jesus. And, and uh, Hold and on, hold the, on. Wait, wait, wait. So I can embarrass you. Lo, I'm going to embarrass you. Does your Quran say not Jesus? No, but it says Allah. Okay, wait. Say Did you know what the Quran says? If you add to the words of Allah, he will damn you to hell. Ya kafir, munafiq. Why did you add to the ayah? No, it, it is. Make Toba. What I said is Make Toba. No, 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 no. As she called, make Toba say, Oh Allah, I am stupid, stone licking pagan. I'm sorry to add words to your Quran. Read the verse again, 4106. So it says, And seek the forgiveness of Allah. Certainly Allah is ever up forbidding, most merciful. Keep going. That's what it says. Okay, keep on, the 107. And also, if you have got the gaps, debate with Dr. Zakir Naik and Eddie Pugh. Ah, come on, dude. We've challenged him. See now, Ashiko, you, you sound very stupid. We've challenged them. we begged them to debate. Zakir Naik and everyone else. I have it on my YouTube and other channels. So you're a liar. So now you're disgracing your prophet. Should I spit on your prophet? Or do you want to respect your prophet, not act stupid and answer my questions? Remember what the Quran tells you, 6108. Do not insult their gods, less in ignorance they insult Allah. So do you want me to insult your prophet because you're making these stupid comments? You there? Oh, did he hang up? Oh, he hung up. He ran. Yeah, so when we send a uh, prayer to the prophet, the angels take that prayer and give it to the prophet. It's not, we're sending it directly to him. No, you're talking That's to him directly. Though. No, that wasn't my point. You're talking to him directly. You're speaking to him. Why are you speaking to him yeah. when you're supposed to be speaking to Allah? But that, that's just the only part of that we, we send blessings to the prophet. So yeah, but you can say blessings without speaking to him. You can say, oh, Allah, send blessings on Muhammad. But you're not. You're speaking to him. You're saying, peace be upon you, O prophet. Why are you speaking to him? Uh, no, I don't, I don't fully understand him. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I won't press that's you on it. Okay, I won't, I won't press you on Because we're talking about monotheism. My problems with Islamic monotheism. Now, the second problem is the fact that the pagans used to kiss and touch stones and idols because they thought these stones and idols represented their gods and goddesses that brought them close to Allah. That's in the Islamic tradition. Why did your prophet make it sunnah that if you perform Hajj or Umrah and if you can, because sometimes the crowds are too much, you must kiss the black stone and touch it and weep on it. Why? It's, uh... I'm not sure, but it's not the same as the pagans. We don't worship the black stone. That's okay, but you're venerating it for the same reason because the hadith say whoever touches the black stone and kisses it, it will then appear with with eyes and a tongue, and it will then intercede and defend you before Allah. That's exactly what the pagans said in the Quran. They said we don't worship them except for them to bring us closer to Allah. So what's the difference? Can you show me the hadith? Oh yeah, let me get it for you. I'll have them bring it up. Hold on one second. All right. Let me just get it for you. I'm going to give you the article. You can show it to him, brother. Got it, brother. And then in that article, you, they, you can click. It'll take you to sunnah.com. All right. Okay. Here it is. 
I'll give it to you too as well, but brother, let me see if I can. Because somehow I closed the comment section and I don't know how to enlarge this. I'm trying to enlarge it. I messed up somehow. I'll try so, to send you a message. Yeah, it's not working. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see if I can get in there. Hold on. I messed up somehow on Zoom. Oh, oh there you, oh, you got it? Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, here. Let me send. Uh, here it goes. Here's the link, brother. If you can open it up and I send it. Got it. There we go. Okay, now. If you, when you open it up, and let me send it to you too on Skype so you can read it in the future. Okay, well, let me get it to you. Hold on, my friend. See, I enjoy people like you. You're very honest, respectful, and you can see I don't attack for just attacking. I don't. Amen. When people slams me, no. I, I'm not mean for no reason. If someone comes and mocks my faith, then it's a different story. There you go. Now, when you open it up, brother, uh, when you open up the file, you do Command F and put eyes. Got it. Okay. It's a long, lengthy reference, but read it, and he's going to see where the source is from. It's from Fiqh Sunnah, quoting Bukhari, Muslim, and others. Tirmidhi, and if you want to just read it. Here you go, brother. Whenever you want me to stop, let me know. Yes. Among the virtues of the black stone is that Allah, Most High, will raise it up on the day of resurrection. It will have two eyes with which it will see, and a tongue with which it will talk, and it will give witness in favor of everyone who touched it righteously in this world. Among the hadiths concerned by this matter, one, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this stone has a tongue and two lips, and it will bear witness on the day of resurrection to those who touched it righteously. Now, before you move on, are you paying attention? Do you see yeah. it's going to have a tongue and two eyes on the day of resurrection? Yeah. Let him finish it because I'm going to give you another one with the hadiths, and we're going to go to the Muslim website itself. Two. Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this black stone would come on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Number three, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said about the stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Number four, Abd Allah ibn Amru ibn al As narrated, Allah's messenger said, the black stone will come on the day of res on the day of judgment, larger than Abu Kubai's, having a tongue and two lips. The hadiths are clear. Such hadiths are to be taken as they are. Allah Almighty is certainly able to give sight and the ability to speak to inanimate objects. The bodies are alike. The phenomena accepted by some can actually be accepted by others. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. The people who have in their heart the sickness of philosophy, mm -hmm. may Allah protect us. Say this is a symbol of the reward of the person who touched the stone. Now, let me explain for him what he's saying. If you say it's a symbolic, allegorical language, may Allah protect us from people like you, because it's literally going to happen. Allah will literally make the stone come to life with eyes and tongues to fight for you and defend you before Allah. And if you say, no, this is allegorical, may Allah protect us from you. So finish it, and then, because we're going to look, see, so he's laughing. I was all right. So get to the end of the quote, because then I sent you another link, and I gave it to him. You'll click that next, but go ahead. The most probable meaning is this one. Even if we can accept the apparent meaning, this is not surprising for someone prone to philosophizing about interpreting the Quran and explaining the Hadith. May Allah forgive him. That comes from virtues of the Kaaba. 51, this hadith is weak and yeah, elevated. Stop there. Uh, that was Zayi, but then it gives you sound nation. But you get the quote. Now, the link I just sent you, brother, open that one up because there's another one. There yeah. you can see, if when you open up, it says the Islamic gods unveiled, part two. Guys, I've given you the links. First of all, notice what chapter 39, verse 3 of the Quran says. Here we go. Now, surely... Since obedience is due to Allah alone, and as for those who take guardians besides him, saying, we do not serve them, save that they make us nearer to Allah, surely Allah will judge them, will judge between them in that in which they differ. Surely Allah does not guide him aright, who is a liar, ungrateful. You now understand what you read, my friend. The pagans told your prophet... We serve these idols only because we want them to bring us closer to Allah. Now, brother, do command F and put black stone. Command F, black stone, so everyone can see the hadith. It's going to get right to that point. You got it. You want me to begin, brother? Yep. 
If it couldn't any more shocking, in fact, disturbing, Muhammad went as far as to command the veneration of an inanimate black stone. I like when you read my paragraphs. Yeah, read the Hadith, forget me. I don't want this. <laughs> Which happens to be, okay. Sorry about that, brother. Okay. Here we go. Okay, uh, here it is. Uh, I, I, Sadibi Jubadis? Yeah, whoever he is, man. Don't name your kids after him. Never, never, ever reported to have said, I heard Ibn Abbas saying that Allah's messenger said, this stone must come on the day of resurrection, and it will have two eyes to see with and a tongue to talk with. Bury witness for him who caressed it with truth. And the greatest Hassan, it is good, and it's Sunan Ibn Majah. And I think I linked to the online version. You see where it says HTTPS Sunnah.com? Yeah, I should do, brother. Just Click for uh, just for just for uh, uh, just for clarification, since uh, a, a majority of my audience are, are, are barely learning, uh, does that mean that that is a trustworthy grade, or what does that mean? Yeah, uh, when you grade something, Hassan it means it's good. It is gotcha. reliable. Sahih gotcha. means it's higher. It's more reliable, but it's good. It's reliable. Hassan means good. The Hadith is good. Now click on it so you can see from the Muslim website, Sunnah.com. This is where I got it from. I didn't make it up. When you click on the link, it'll take you right there so they can see it. Yep, here it is. Okay, is that a Muslim website or is that a Christian website? That is a Muslim website. So I didn't make it up. I got it from their own sources. Sunan Ibn Majah graded Hassan. There you go. Now, when you go back, read the other hadith. Go back to that page and read the second one. And so my question stands after we read it so everyone can see it. And he sees it. I gave him the link so he can read it up on his own. Right? And the hadith right after the one you just read. This is right. The Book of Hajji? Yep. Okay, here we go. Chapter. Uh, what has been related about the black stone? Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Allah said about the black stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with, testifying to whoever touched it in truth. Okay, now here you got it again. It's Hassan raining and you can see it. So here you have the black stone that you're supposed to kiss and touch. If you want it to intercede for you, it will come to life. The black stone will be given eyes and a tongue. It will speak and it will defend you and say to Allah, use to kiss it and touch it. But then it gets worse because it says that the black stone used to be white, but it turned black from all your sins, the sins of the Muslims that kissed and touched it. Do me a favor, brother, put command F and put in the word black in B L A C K E N. It's going to take you to that hadith. Here we go. Ibn Abbas narrated that. The messenger of Allah said the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. What made it black? The sins of the children of Adam. Sins. So you're seeing it now. Give, give us the what's the name of the hadith there for you reading? Great is Hassan. Hassan Jami Tirmidhi. It's good. Okay. Now, my question for you, my friend. It was white, it turned black from your sins because it means it absorbed your sins. From your sins touching it, it took your sins so you could be forgiven. And then it's going to come to life and speak for you. And you still think you really believe in Tawheed? And what difference is this from the pagans? The pagans said to your prophet the same thing. Look, we're only serving these idols and stones because we hope on the day of judgment, they will defend us before Allah. And Muhammad condemned them for being pagans. But then he turns around and does that to the black stone. You Muslims, do what I did. Kiss the black stone. Touch the black stone. It will absorb your sins. That's why it's becoming black from your sins. It's saving you from your sins. And then Allah will bring it to life with eyes and tongue to fight for you and defend you before Allah. So this is your intercessor and savior before Allah. What is this? Do you believe this? Yeah, we don't, we don't fully understand it. But I'm not rejecting the hadith or anything but because it's authentic. But... Like, I can't fully understand it. So them. why do you blame us Christians then for saying Jesus, our Lord, took our sins and he'll intercede for us when you believe that about a black stone? If a black stone can't do it, Jesus can't do it? If not, why? So a black stone, you, you're okay with a black stone doing it for you, but you're not okay with Jesus choosing to do it for you. And then you condemn us saying, Jesus, who loved me so much, loved you so much, paid the price of your sin to die the death you deserve to save you and he will intercede for you. No, shoot! You're Catholic, but ah, oh, black stone. The more I kiss it and touch it, smother it, the more of my sins it'll absorb, and then it'll come to life to intercede for me. So the black stone's my savior. You can have Jesus, I'll take the black stone. Really? Okay, so Jesus can intercede for you, but that doesn't mean you will. 
Okay, but on what grounds do you say he won't? Isn't it true? Even in your hadith, it says your prophet will intercede, and then all the messengers will intercede, and then the angel will inter angels will intercede. Yeah, that's on the day of uh, uh, on the day of judgment. You believe that he's interceding for you right now? Sure. Why wouldn't he? Because don't you believe that your prophet? Because you said it earlier. This is what you said. Angels make known to your prophet when you greet him, and doesn't he then greet you back? Isn't that an invocation, a prayer for you? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, so say it again. Because when you say "Assalamu alaykum, Assalamu alaykum, Ahiyu Nabi," the angels say. Oh, Messenger of Allah, so and so greeted him, and then he says, Alaikum Salam. Isn't Alaikum Salam an invocation of prayer for blessing? Yeah, yeah, it is. So that means your Prophet is interceding for you now. Why can't Jesus, when you believe Jesus is alive with Allah? Uh, yeah, Jesus is alive, but he's not, um, he's not doing any intercession work right now. Oh, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. So your Prophet, who's not with Allah, he's in the grave, Barzakh. He will invoke blessing on you. But Jesus, who's with Allah himself, according to the Quran, he's just going to sit there and not care and pray for no one? Yeah, because Jesus is in the third heaven. You know, he's not with Allah. That's not what the Quran says, buddy. The Quran says in 355 and 4158, Allah took Jesus to himself. Unless Allah is in the third heaven, Jesus yeah. isn't in the third heaven. And according to your Islamic sources, the prophets are not in heaven yet. They're in Barzakh, like Moses is in the grave. That was a special journey where your prophet went through the seven heavens, and there the prophets appeared only for that time. But they're in their graves. Musa, the Hadith of Muslim says that your prophet found Moses praying in the grave. Yeah, all the prophets are in their graves except Jesus. Say it again. All the prophets are in their graves, but where is Jesus? He's not in his grave, right? <laughs> Jesus is in heaven. <laughs> Good. So you're laughing because you're seeing it. May God open your heart and eyes. You're laughing because you see it. You just admit all the prophets in their graves, and you said, except Jesus. So where is Jesus then, according to your Quran? He's in heaven. But where are heaven? Because he's, he opened up 4158, Surah Tanisa. Can you read it for him? But Allah took him up unto himself. Allah was ever mighty, wise. And now go to 355, chapter 3, verse 55, and show him where Jesus is, according to the Quran. And remember what Allah said, Oh, Jesus, lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me, and I'm cleansing thee of those who disbelieve, and I'm setting those who follow thee above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then unto me ye will all return, and I shall judge between you as to that wherein ye used to differ. And so the first part of the verse, where it is... Where did Allah say he's going to take Jesus in the first part of the verse? Oh, Jesus, lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me. Does he say I'm going to cause you to ascend to the third heaven? Nope. So I'm going to ask you, my friend. By the way, I want to apologize to Saul. Saul just said, Sam, I wasn't attacking Rosary. I'm saying the Muslims attacked us. So, brother, forgive me. My bad. I, didn't know. I thought you are a troll. You're my brother in the Lord. So I didn't mean that because I didn't know. I, I apologize as well. I didn't know, brother. I had no problem. Brother. Solid, brother. God bless you. But anyway, coming back to my friend here. Where is Allah, according to your belief? He's above the heavens. And so it says, Allah took Jesus to himself. So where is Jesus then, if he's with Allah? I can't say it. <laughs> but the Quran says it. Just uh, By the way, William, if you ever want to bring Rob Christian to do a show with you, and you want to do it, and Rob Christian is a top-notch Christian apologist against Islam. He loves the Lord. Wonderful. Knows Arabic. He's got a great YouTube channel. So maybe you go on with him, or you can invite him to do something on Islam. But Definitely. Rob, reach out to me, brother. Coming back to you, what do you mean you can't say? The Quran says it for you. Lo, this is God speaking, you believe that. Lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me. And then chapter 4, verse 158, there Allah says, or again, it's supposedly Allah speaking. Nay, he, he raised him to himself. Himself, me, myself. What do you mean you can't say? Just repeat the Quran. The Quran says it. Where did you learn this? Who's your teacher, son? I can't hear you, what? Where do you learn this stuff? Like, who's your teacher? I have no human teacher. My teacher is the Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son. This should be proof to you. Jesus is Lord. He's alive. Because only Jesus can raise up someone like me and William without any college, high school, seminary, and fill us with such wisdom to even shock you and blow your mind. That's how real Jesus is and how real the Holy Spirit of the Father who lives in us is. Amen. So if you want, friend, I'll let you think about these issues. And if you have more questions on the Trinity, come back because I don't want to overwhelm you. I want to leave you with that. You got the articles, right? Yeah, I got it. Okay. And we're going to pray for you. We're not going to mention your name. And here's your proof. If a Muslim can be respectful, I don't attack Islam. But I deal with people who attack me 
attack my family saying I'm a white beater and your God came out of a woman's private part and he went to the toilet, that, then I can't be nice to people like that. But if they're like you, I'll do nothing but love you and respect you because you may not believe this. You may not believe it. But Jesus is my heart. I love you so much. I want you to be saved so you can be with me, with the true Lord forever and ever because I do not want to see you in hell. And I mean that from my heart. Jesus loves you too much and he doesn't want to lose you. And I mean that from my heart. So I don't want to see you in hell either. Exactly. That's why I keep praying. Then we'll see. God will guide us. But keep come, come back. If you have more questions, we'll do it sometime this week. Because I want to okay. give you a chance to rest because this is a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. So may God guide you. We'll be praying for you, young man. Okay. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Take care.